Hi folks, Christine here with Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. I'm out here at Conservatory Park today to show you another fun new crafting idea with materials that you can find in your backyard. Pine needle baskets. Let's go see how to do it. All right guys, so there's only three things you need to make a pine needle basket. A pine, some twine, and a little pine. This right here is a splash pine. While most professional basket weavers prefer long leaf pine needles because they're a bit longer and easier to work with, they're a bit scarce. So flash pine does just fine and we're going to collect some needles and get to weaving. Alright, so we've got plenty of pine needles on the ground here. I like to collect pine needles off the ground because they're already dried out, ready to go. I don't use green pine needles because when they dry out they can uh, shrink and make the basket a little looser. Plus, I like to get fresh needles off the ground. Uh, when they're sitting out here in the humidity, uh, they actually stay pretty bendy and perfect for weaving. So I like to collect my pine needles just a day or two before I do my weaving. And these look absolutely perfect. Go for the lighter colored needles, the nice uh, chocolatey brown or tan. Don't go for the graying ones. They're a bit too old, they're too brittle. And uh, so I'm going to collect a bunch and then we'll go over to the table and sort them. The collecting is the easy part, it's the sorting that gets a little tedious. All right guys, so we've got our pine needles. This is a nice bunch. I've sorted them out. They're all going the same direction. So I'm going to take six or seven at a time. You can take as many as a time at a time as you want. Uh, it'll just build your basket at different rates. Uh, I suggest at least five, because if you go under five, it might take a little longer. So you want to get that bundle nice and even and come a little closer and I'll show you exactly how to start. So, we've got our sheaths all going the same way. We're going to take our thread, our twine, and lay it over the sheaths. And we're going to wrap it around and move backwards. See how it's going back over that first length? I'm going to do it nice and tight. On the, on the other end of this twine, I have a large embroidery needle. And you're going to take that needle and you're going to go straight through the middle. Oops. Straight through the middle. Pull it tight. So that won't come out. So that's how you start it. Now, you can keep going with this if you want it to be longer. Your base will just be more oval as you keep going. So next step is you want to bend. It's okay if some of them crack. Some of them are going to. You just do your best to make sure not all of them crack. You want to take the thread, wrap it over, and I actually like to hold it with my right hand. I'm right-handed and so I actually use my left hand for the needle. So you're bending them over, you're wrapping around, and then, I don't know how to get a good angle on this, push it through on the other side, pull it around, and pull tight. Do that again. So you're wrapping that thread from the front to the back. You're pushing that needle through the back. Don't poke yourself. Pull it tight. You see, we're already starting to get a small oval of pine needles. Push it through, pull it tight. We're basically going to continue doing that. Wrap it around. It's okay if some of them break, just try not to have all of them break. Push it through. Here. It's okay if it's not pretty. A lot of times the base isn't pretty, but you can make the pattern much better 
as you get farther out of the center. Wrap around. Oop, I'm going to do it a little closer there. Pull through. There we go. So wrap through the back. A nice big needle is good for this, but sometimes it gets a little stiff. So I'm going to keep doing this and I'll show you what to do at the next step. Uh, thread or twine is starting to get a little short, so we want to change it for a longer one. So the first thing you want to do, go ahead, wrap it around again, and then take your needle, make it go diagonally down through the base into a tighter spot in the coil. See how that's going through? Push it through. Pull it out. You want to make it go through at least two coils because that tension from the coil will keep the twine from coming out. And you can just snip this right off, start a new twine. So push that through. Just start exactly like you did before. Start from the back, push it through, going under the last coil, leave a bit of a tail there so you can grab it, wrap, go ahead stitch it, wrap, and you can probably let go of that tail now. And you've started a new thread. No problem at all. That's one of the easier things with making these baskets. And so you can just keep going, keep adding needles, keep changing the thread. I like to keep the thread hmm, probably maximum three feet long, but that's up to you. And uh, you can just snip these off when you're done. They're not going to come undone. And uh, uh, that's about it. So let me show you the final product now. All right, guys, so here's the finished product. It took me about two hours, but I'm sure if I practiced a little more, I could go a lot faster. I'm pretty pleased with it. The bottom's not so pretty, but you know it's the sides that count. I hope you guys try this out. I hope you have fun with it. It's a really cheap and easy project with materials that you can get right outside your house. Uh, leave us a comment if you do it. We want to see what you make. I hope you guys have lots of fun, and I'll see you later.